Say you want to create movie scenes or control camera angles, or perhaps you need precise shot angles for your short films or videos. It can be difficult to control camera angles using only a text prompt. That's why we use Blender 3D, a powerful tool for 3D artists to create and render 3D scenes. Let's take a look at how I created these huts using ControlNet and Flux. The ControlNet image is a basic low, poly model of the huts created in Blender. You can see that it generates a depth image. Flux then uses the Blender 3D image to generate the final composition. This method allows for precise shot composition control. Now, let's try another camera angle. Let's view the scene from a roadside perspective. You don't even need to render the image. Simply save the viewport image and load it into ControlNet. I will name the file as Village Straight and save it in the Pictures folder. Now let's load the image as ControlNet image to extract the depth map to guide ConfUI composition with that image. After rendering, we achieve a nice roadside view of a village. Now let's zoom in closer to the huts and render again. I will zoom in the camera closer and save the image as village in and save it. Now let's load it up as Contronet image again. And cue it. We get a closer angle to the hut. This time, we get an image that focuses on the huts, similar to the original Blender image. I will drag the ControlNet image closer to the final image to compare it better. Next, let's add a tree and see if it renders properly. I'll drag in a tree model from Blender and arrange it to my liking. I'll position the tree in the middle of the village huts. To enhance the composition, I'll slightly move the huts to create a better view of the tree. Once satisfied, I'll save the image and load it into ControlNet. In the prompt, we need to specify a big tree in the middle of village huts. After queuing, we get a well composed image featuring a tree in the middle, surrounded by huts. Now, let's try something different, floating huts. I'll raise the huts into the air to create a floating effect, then adjust the camera angle for the best view. Once done, I'll save the image and load it into ControlNet. The result is a scene of floating huts near a tree. However, the huts don't look quite right. To refine this, Let's revisit the first image and adjust the strength of ControlNet to better understand its effects. At 0.200 strength, we get a different composition because the ControlNet influence is weak. Increasing the strength to 0.400 helps maintain the original composition more accurately. Now, let's try a different subject, a woman standing near a car. I'll use Blender's Asset Library add-on an online repository where you can search and import assets. I'll load a car and a woman model. Then adjust the scene so she is standing near the car. After saving the image and loading it into ControlNet, we queue the process.
The result is a control net depth image alongside a rendered image of a woman near a car. However, the generated image doesn't fully match the depth image. To fix this, I'll increase the control net strength to 0.600, making the rendered image more closely resemble the original composition. If you prefer a more creative output, you can lower the control net strength. We get image that resembles the image more, with high control net steps. By strength here I mean the N%. Percent. By leveraging Blender 3D and Control Net, you gain greater creative control over your compositions. This way, you can fine tune every element of your scene, from lighting and camera angles to object placement and overall composition. Whether you are crafting cinematic shots, conceptual renders, or game environments, this workflow ensures that your vision comes to life exactly as you imagined. The ability to iterate, experiment, and Refine makes this approach an invaluable tool for artists and creators alike.